a man may say something like, hey, I don't want a relationship right now, or hey, you know, I'm not interested in dating right now. And if you like him enough, you'll be like, oh yeah, sure he does. You know, I can make him change his mind. The big problem is not creating or not asking the right questions up front or having the conversations like, what are you looking for? What's important to you? What are your values? And so if you don't have these conversations, you're just like, oh, I just like him. We're going to kick it, see where it goes. Six months down the road, you know, you're here in this situation and you never had a conversation to get an understanding of where you're headed. Discernment says, like, if you continue down this road, it's a waste of time because you guys don't line up in value um, with your values. So I think learning who you are, what you want, what's important for you will save a lot of time and disappointment when it comes to dating. I have a guest with us in the building. I don't know why I always say in the building like she's sitting across <laughs> from me, but it just sounds good. One day it'll eventually, it, it'll work. Ab absolutely, in the future. Yeah, I'll, I'll fly you out one day or something like that. Okay. But, <laughs> uh, today's guest, this is her second time on the show. Today's guest is a media personality, inspirational influencer, and communication specialist. She has a huge following on Instagram and on Facebook, Brave Arts Community. Let's show some love to Kamisha. How are you doing this evening? Hi, I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Yes, you are back again. Yes, I'm back. I'm glad to be back. Sure. I must have done a great job last time. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> we're back for more, part two. Yes, the people love yeah. you. People be, and I don't know they be unboxing you, but they be unboxing me. Like, who is that? No, well, I'm honored. Thank oh, you guys yeah. for the love. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll be getting the inboxes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, originally, there was a video that I shared. Actually, my wife shared it with me first. I thought it was so good. I had to share it, and then I shared it with mm -hmm. you as well. Where uh, there was a lady, I think she was on Glee. I think that was the girl from Glee. Oh, yes. Amber Riley. Yes. Amber Riley. There you go. Yes. Yes. She said her homeboy told her, I don't have to lie to women because if she liked me enough, she would lie to herself. Mm -hmm. And we're yeah. going to talk about a woman's discernment. And when I thought about this, I was like, let me hit up Kamisha. <laughs> What are your thoughts on that reel? You know, I think it's true. And I've honestly said that a few times. I think it is true. If you are not, as a woman, if you are not in touch with knowing what you want, mm -hmm. um, how you want it and who you want it from, you can absolutely get caught up in this type of situation. A man may say something like, hey, I don't want a relationship right now. Or, hey, you know, I'm not interested in dating right now. And if you like him enough, you'll be like, oh, yeah, sure he does. You know, I can make him change his mind. And so that's kind of how that scenario comes about. If a man pulls you in or if you allow him to and you don't set these boundaries and on the front end and know what you're looking for, you can lie to yourself and then just cause a whole lot of problems down the road. So it's a true statement. Mm. It is absolutely true. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting because. I was wondering, like, what are some of the things that is it could is it something that a man that you might like about him personally, but you kind of see the red flags like you you're kind of fighting with yourself? That yes, that's exactly how it can happen. And to be honest, if you are so involved with someone, you're spending time with someone. And I think the big problem is not creating or not asking the right questions up front or having the conversations like. What are you looking for? What's important to you? What are your values? And so if you don't have these conversations, you're just like, oh, I just like him. We're going to kick it, see where it goes. Six months down the road, you know, you're here in this situation and you never had a conversation to get an understanding of where you're headed. So, yeah, you, if he says, hey, I'm not ready, you stick around, you like him, you're catching feelings, you're going, you're dating, you're intimate, then you're going to think that he wants these things or convince yourself that he does when he's told you the truth. So that's exactly where that stems from. You'll lie to yourself. Mm. Yeah. That is interesting. So can you tell me about a woman's discernment? Because when I inboxed you originally, I, I just couldn't wait to hear your <laughs> answer and when it worked and <laughs> when it doesn't work. Is that the same thing as far as just kind of having that fighting kind of 
tugging on yourself and knowing what you should do and what you shouldn't do? Yeah, I, I think you really have to be in tune with yourself. You have to know who you are, like I said earlier, what you're looking for and what you want. And you have to follow along with people that align with that. And so that's kind of how that discernment comes across. I mean, I found myself, I'm dating, I'm getting to know people, you know, I'm single. And so I may meet someone and I know personally, I'm in my late thirties, I'm almost 40, I'm done having kids. And so I may meet someone that says, Hey, you know, I don't have kids. I know I want some, well, my discernment says, this is not for me because I know that this person wants kids. So discernment says, like, if you continue down this road, it's a waste of time because you guys don't line up in value um, with your values. So I think learning who you are, what you want, what's important for you will save a lot of time and disappointment when it comes to dating and getting to know gender, you know, of people of the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then what about the what about the 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 ladies that's like 20? <laughs> 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 Four souls. I yeah, what do you say to them? <laughs> I would say in that age, to be honest, if I'm 20 or if I'm now my daughter's 19. And so okay. this is what she's in her second year of college. I'm so proud of her. She's at Bama Roll Tide. <laughs> but what I would tell her is at that age, focus on finding you, focus on yourself and what you have going on at the moment. Dating is cool. But I wouldn't recommend getting into a serious long-term commitment looking towards marriage until later in your 20s or early 30s. And I know that's not a cookie cutter for everyone, but I told her the type of man that I loved and wanted at 20 is completely different than the type of man that I love and want in my 30s. And so um, choose wisely because if you can't, if you don't pick someone that you can grow with, evolve with, and that will be a good partner to you, potential father to your children you're going to have a lot of cleanup on the back end. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, in my early 20s, I wouldn't even focus on, on dating. Your, your mental lobe is not even fully grown and fully developed until 25. So you're going to make some crazy decisions, you know? So, you know, think about that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree because I got a revelation today, Kamisha. Okay. And I got to share. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, do share. Yes, here's my revelation. Knowing what I know now at 46, okay, I I would have, and even when I say this, I love my wife, I love my marriage and everything, mm -hmm. but I wish I would have been set enough financially mm. that once we got married, she could have the option of wanting to work or not. I like that. I'm sure she'd appreciate that as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's really good to think back on. Yeah, because I mean, she's you know she has a career and all other stuff, you know. So and I get that, but to give her that option, I, I think especially with today, I mean, you know, you're a mom, you know how much it takes to raise kids and yeah. that nature, you know. So um, I'm just thinking as I'm older, I'm like, man, I I wish I would have just had you know my game tight because mm -hmm. I'm referring to like you said earlier like not really even taking dating that serious and stuff man. right right focusing on the right things I think another key around that age group is having a good support system or having good mentors or good people around you and I remember having a conversation with a friend like when I was young like that you know I didn't really have women around me that I wanted to look up to or cousins or aunts or you know, it's important to have that around you, people who are successful, who are going kind of where you want to go and that can give you advice because that can help you in terms of making decisions on who to date, you know, maybe not having kids so young or maybe getting your education and focusing on that. And so I pride myself in wanting to be the person that I wish I had when I was younger. And that's the key and that's important. So I will tell my daughter or friends like, girl, please don't worry about that boy. Like go on about your business. You'll run into him later in life or, you know, he's playing around, go on, you know, but I didn't have that. And so I think that's also important to have, you know, in helping you make these life changing decisions. Mm, that's good. Now I do have a question to ask you too, and this isn't even in my notes Okay, about parenting now. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's harder to parent in today's culture when 
like your daughter and i'm not saying that she does but i'm just saying like mm -hmm. somebody like a cardi b might have her ear or okay. somebody you know culture <laughs> has that influence do you think it's harder for us to parent today with kids having so many options to hear absolutely and and i don't think it's not even necessarily well i mean that plays a part of course you're influenced by what you see and what you're around mm -hmm. but i think the kids are exposed to so much so soon i mean we were outside playing when we were kids. Like what, what was the internet, you know? And so now these kids as toddlers have tablets and cell phones and whatever, you know, they're exposed so early to so much. And so it's information overload. They're getting things that they shouldn't get so early. And I've noticed the trend of a lot of the teenagers now are depressed and going through and suicidal. And we didn't really have a lot of that. I mean, I'm sure it was, you know, prevalent, but not as bad when we were coming up as they are now. They have, and they're taking on so much. And our generations are having kids earlier in life. Like, you know, parents are a lot young. Teen pregnancy is, you know, a lot more common. And so it's a little different than when we were coming up. And so it's tougher as a parent. It really is. Yeah, I think so for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think even with kids, even just being younger, we, we just like talking about discernment, but being a parent and having your kids ear when they're about to make a, a certain decision is just like uh and, and let me let me let me say this too no shade to cardi okay because i know i said cardi, <laughs> yeah, I, I love cardi. <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah no shade to her I was, let me let me take that back because she might be watching i don't know <laughs> so no shade to her i just kind of use her as a as an example so right right no um, but yeah, I was wondering if it's harder for kids to make sound decisions just because there's so many people in their ear. So when they do mess yeah. up, do we just really give them that grace or is it just like, you should know better, you know? Yeah, I, I think that there's a balance, you know, that has to take place. I think we as parents have to set examples and set expectations of what, you know, we think we should expect. But I feel like we also have an advantage in this generation. I mean, I started having my kids young, so I'm able to be more relatable, you know, and I can listen to or I can understand or, hey, like, I know you want to go to this party. I get it. Go have fun. However, make wise decisions. And my parents, they weren't so lenient, you know, and so, you know, it's a little different in this generation, but still have those boundaries set as parents. Like, yes, you can have a good time. Yes, we can do these things. However, make wise decisions while you're doing it. So yeah, parenting is such a like serious job, thankless job, but it's well worth it. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause I have a 19 daughter, 19 year old daughter as well. Okay. So I'm I'm from 19 all the way down to three. So the way my Ooh, life bless is set it. Up, yeah. Oh, so bless. <laughs> bless I, I, it. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I feel you. My younger two, they're they're in middle schoolish age. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm grateful. But it's still a challenge. I've got a preteen. I'm going through round two now. So pray church. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, yeah, pray for me because Lord Yeah. Lord. At this point, no matter what age, we've got some some struggles going on. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. I have a question and I, I want your transparency and whatever you feel comfortable with sharing. Has okay. there been a time when your discernment, when your discernment was off about someone you dated? And can you tell us what happened? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel the trauma unloading. <laughs> um, So I won't go into full detail. Sure. Um, However, there was a situation where I dated someone coming fresh out of a situation. And I knew on mm -hmm. the front end. I knew, okay, someone coming out of something for years is going to need time to breathe. They're going to need time to heal from whatever may have gone on. You know, they they may need time to just find themselves again to enjoy. But the person was saying, hey, I'm ready to date. I know what I want. You know, I don't need time with this and that. And I've been detached for years and this and no. What you know with on the front end, that's kind of how you need to proceed and how like and so. Needless to say, it blew up in my face. The person wasn't ready, like they said they were. And it caused a lot of heartache on my end. And so I had to kind of pick up the pieces from that and learn that lesson, that what I knew is what I should, should stick with. And so I think about these situations as, if I'm giving a girlfriend advice, mm -hmm. what would I say? What would I tell her? And I kind of try and follow that. 
um, stick with and go with what you know. No matter what the person's saying, you got to look at the actions. Mm -hmm. So that was an interesting situation, you know, but it was a lesson learned. And so now when I hear something, I'm like, "Mm, I don't think, yeah, let me just keep it moving. We'll circle around maybe later, you know, Mm -hmm. but going with my first mind has, hasn't steered me wrong since. So I'm thankful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I hear a lot of women say that, like, I should have went with my first train of thought. Mm-hmm. That's that intuition and discernment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we know. Oh, we okay. know. Yeah. <laughs> they say study long, study wrong. So I was like, I wonder if once you just kind of give yourself that space to like, oh, maybe, you know, that whole hearing a part of in between is just like, ah. Yeah, you know, it it can be a struggle. Yeah, between your heart and your mind, sometimes it can be a struggle. But I will say, and along along with discernment, having a spiritual guidance is important too. And that's something that I can say at that time I wasn't all the way aligned with. Mm -hmm. A situation comes up, I may say, okay, he seems cool. Let me pray about it. You know, let me think about how this could potentially impact my life. And start asking the good questions. Okay, well, have you gone to therapy? Have you taken some time to heal? Have you, you know, and that kind of can help with the process as well. But if I'd never gone through it, I would probably still be stuck in that pattern. And so I've learned from it. Trust me, I've had a couple come with that same scenario. Oh, I'm fresh out. I'm like, Mm-mm. I already learned that lesson. No, thank you. Next. <laughs> yeah. So if you don't learn from it, you're going to keep running into it over and over and so that's been my thing like let me learn from it let me move on and then you know I know that better is coming yeah 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 I I feel that do you if if you're on a date right and I says that he uh he's not in therapy right now does that automatically take him off the table as far as a, a potential say it does I would ask more follow-up questions um I would want to know because you don't have to be in therapy at this moment but do you believe in therapy that's a question I would ask have you gone before because um I've gone before and I'm not in at the moment but I have the tools you know so if I meet someone and they say well no I don't believe in therapy I just talk to my pastor I just immediately know (laughs) because I need someone that's going to be willing to um, talk their issues out, be willing to learn, to change. And then premarital counseling is important. You know, I think mental health is important. And you don't necessarily have to go to therapy when something's wrong or when something's off or when you're hurting. Just being in a good mental space helps and having someone to talk to. I'm not a therapist. You can unload, you can share with me, but sometimes you need that professional to kind of help you. And so if someone is not open to therapy, then that's a red flag for me. But at the moment, if you're not going and you've gone before and it's helped and that's that's cool. We can work with that. OK. OK. Yeah. That's good to know, because some people, they they're just like if they're not in therapy. I'm nope. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be honest, once you've gone and once you've spent a good amount of time in therapy, you have those tools there. And then if you hit a snag or, you know, a rough spot, then you can go back. But. It, it is life changing. I definitely would recommend it to everyone. Yes. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. My my first therapist, she was the best. Oh my God. I wish I still had her to this day. But yeah. But Mine was awesome too. Yeah. yeah. Like definitely said, need it. Yeah. Yeah. You get those, uh, like you say, you get the tools, you get mm-hmm. the necessary tools, and you can always use them. It's not like they, uh, you know, you got to renew them after 90 days, you know? Right, right. And you can have, and it it's really helpful. You know, I've really used those in my own life and it's been helpful, you know, to me as well. And it's, I think my growth kind of really skyrocketed after um, the therapy, you know, sessions. And it's been almost two years now, but I'm still using those same tools. So I'm thankful for having gone. I wish I'd actually gone sooner when I did go. You know, but I'm still thankful that I did go and, and I, it's been great for me. For sure. Yeah. What is the greatest piece of <laughs> advice you ever received? Oh, that's such a loaded question. Um, I really don't have an answer for that. Mm-hmm. You got so many. You got so many <laughs> of them. Just like. That, yeah, that's so loaded. You know, my dad used to say this cheesy. If you 
if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. And I think that's like, that's a great word of advice, but that's the first thing that comes to mind. It's cheesy, but it's true. And so I've, I've kind of lived by that mantra. Um, I'm a researcher. I'm inquisitive. And so I think planning is essential you know, and important. We had a conversation before this conversation about that, you know, so it's important. Yeah. Yeah. To kind of, you know, know where we're going. That's all I got for now. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. I was reading a book by John Maxwell. He says every day you're either preparing or repairing. Every yes, day. I love that. Yeah, so, I love that. And so that that changed that changed the game for me. Uh, let's let's jump into this bonus round because I want to ask you some questions. Okay. There's no. OK, let's do answer. it. From seeing your parents relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Oh, <laughs> Communication, communication, communication. So much so that I studied communication. My degrees are in communication. It left an imprint in, on my life. And I saw it firsthand how the lack thereof can like cause so much turmoil in a relationship. But I did also learn on the plus side, the importance of friendship in a marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you gotta be friends. Uh, transparent moment for me. One of the reasons I, because I was married for fifteen years. You familiar mm-hmm. with the story? Mm-hmm. We we never really were friends. Mm. Like we, yeah, it's, it's like she 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 wasn't my best friend. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you can't have that, where you can look past the spouse stage. It's like, you know, I don't want to hurt my best friend. Like I don't want right. to, you know, it, ha- it adds an extra layer, layer to it, you know? It does. And it's important. Like I think about, um, there are these times when you're in a relationship, marriage or whatever, you you love the person, but you may not like them. And that's kind of how friendship works. It's like, hey, like you get on my nerves today. Let's not talk. However, some good news came up. I want to talk to you about it. Like that's the friendship, you know, component to it. So actually liking your partner, that's where the friendship comes in. So that's why it's important to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You talked about communication. Yeah. Give me, give me your, give us some wisdom on communication. Like what about communication because I've heard this from a therapist I had on last week and she talked mm-hmm. about how men need to improve their communication. Okay. And it's it's making them uh less effective when it comes to dating and relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and I guess I'm asking, like I had a question because I'll talk to my wife, right? And I guess I'm trying to word it the right way. I okay. would she would talk to me and I would repeat back to her what she said to me. Mm-hmm. That helps me with communication. Yes, that's a great I'm, tool. If I repeat it, because she said it, I said it back to her. So now I've heard it again. Mm-hmm. So do you have any uh, communication tools, anything that you can maybe help men with? Okay. The communication, because I know men struggle in that area. They, yeah, must do. And <laughs> I would say, um, I think the best part about communication is understanding yourself first, because if you can't Mm. understand yourself or your feelings, you won't be able to articulate that. Mm. Like, for instance, if maybe your wife or your girlfriend, I don't know, doesn't call you or doesn't call you back and you feel ignored, then usually the first response is, well, I'm upset because you didn't call me. And I feel like but the real problem is you didn't feel important. You felt ignored or you didn't feel as a priority. And so understanding why you're really upset helps you articulate that even more. So instead of saying, well, you didn't call me, I'm upset, or I'm not answering you, or I'm not talking to you. I mean, that's more of a female issue. But for the sake of this example, <laughs> you didn't call me, I'm upset. You know, it can really be as simple as, hey, you know, when you called me, I just felt like you ignored me or like I wasn't a priority to you. And it's important for me to hear from you throughout the day. Mm -hmm. If you word it like that, she'll be able to get it. Okay, well, I didn't, you know, make him feel like a priority. So next time, let me make sure he knows, hey, I didn't call you because, you know, I was busy or what was going on, but I look forward to talking to you. Mm -hmm. So understanding your own feelings, learning how to process them will help you articulate them hopefully a little bit more. But I will say from the women, we have to learn how to create that space for them to share 
And that helps with the communication too. Mm. Oh, I love that. You said, I don't want to mess this up, but you said, <laughs> you said you have to understand yourself. And your feelings. And, and when you get to talking to a man about his feelings, he doesn't want to hear it. <laughs> he doesn't want to talk about it. But once you understand what is the root cause of why I'm feeling the way that I feel, that will help a lot. Mm -hmm. It will. Because usually I understand with men, your first instinct of emotion, usually if it's not joy and excitement, it's anger. And so it's good to understand and to be able to express frustration or hurt. You know, those are other emotions, you know, that we need to work on as well. So understanding why you felt the way you did mm -hmm. really helps and aid in, in communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And being able to articulate that and know that you have a space to do so is important. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Oh, show within itself. That's so yeah. 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 Part three. I know, right? Because <laughs> I and, and let, let me just tell on myself since we're here, because I know for me, I struggled for years, Kamisha, with communication. And mm -hmm. I it was like a revelation to me. I was like, oh, I didn't get to express myself when I was a kid. Like mm -hmm. I always just be like, do what I told you, don't ask me any questions. Mm -hmm. It was just that yeah. was it. Yeah, that's that's that black mama for you. Because <laughs> it's genetics. We we for generation to generation, that's how we parent. But we had, to, and I, I talked to my therapist about that as well. We had to learn how to respectfully engage, you know, and to make sure that, you know, our sons feel heard. And Because if you continuously do that with your sons, they will tune you out. And then when they get married and the wife is like, well, you don't listen to me and you don't, you're tuning it out because mom taught you that. So I think it's important for us moms with sons to hear them out and make sure they feel heard. And that will aid in relationships down the road. So I've tried to pride myself with my sons that I'm raising. Listen, I don't want your daughters to have to heal from them because of what I didn't do as a mom. I've dealt with enough sons myself <laughs> and had to say, mom, now I'm thankful for you, but we could, let's work with this, you know? So I think that's kind of where it begins. And I think a lot of women need to understand that look at the man's childhood, look at his relationship with his mom, how communication was, I guess, catered to or tended to as a child. And that will show you a lot. Yeah. It will. Uh, yes. That yeah. Is good. Because, and we have to remember it too. And I'm glad you said you had those conversations because you, you're you thinking in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, we, because I was telling, I was telling my wife the other day, I was like, we're raising future husbands. We're yes. Raising future wives. But we just yes. look at them as just these little kids, you know? Yes. So. And and it's true. And to be honest, a lot of us take after our parents, whether we want to or not, because it's what we're exposed to. And I had to look in the mirror before during therapy. Like I realized a lot of my patterns in dating was just like how my mom talked to her spouse and how she acted with, you know, her husband. And I said, no, I, I'll keep the good and I'll, you know, get rid of the bad, you know, but it's important. Like it's so serious when it comes to raising kids because, you know, they're going to impact someone's life. So we have to take that seriously. Yeah. So can yeah. you telling me you used to cuss people out? No, I, I was never that bad. <laughs> However, I come from a strong line of strong women. And so we don't take mess. We run things and we, so I had to work on being soft and feminine and Yes, dear. And picking and choosing my battles. And, you know, so that was a process for me. It's something I had to learn how to work with. Yeah. yeah. My mom was like, I'm not having it. Whatever. I'm running this. You know, you can. And I had to, you know, learn how to just sit in my femininity and, and be soft and receive and create that space for that man to share his feelings and to be vulnerable. So that's like my greatest strength now. Mm -hmm. But it was my greatest weakness years ago. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that growth and evolution is important. Yeah, for sure. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. It really is. I think it depends on what which way you're looking at it. From a broken perspective, it's easier to love someone else. From a healed perspective, it's easier to love yourself because loving someone else is an extension of how you love yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I look at it. I will treat the person in my life or partner or whoever friend with as much care as I care for myself. 
So mm. at this stage, I would say for me personally, myself, that comes first. And then I can share the love with others. Awesome. So has there ever been a, a time in your life where maybe you love someone more than than yourself? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. That's another lesson I had to learn. But absolutely. And it just didn't end well. It never does. Because when you take on someone else and you put them first and you love them first, they still will love themselves more most times because of focus and energy and they're put on this pedestal and everything's about them. So when it ends, you're kind of left with nothing mm -hmm. and you have to kind of rebuild from that. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend very ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't recommend that at all. But, yeah, I mean, you live and you learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. Because there's it's easy. And like you say, I like the way you broke a dime set from a broken place putting someone before yourself mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. said at the end of the day if they leave you just you just totally depleted yeah, yeah that's it you don't have anything you lose your identity oftentimes you know you're so focused on their needs and their wants now i'm not saying be selfish like make everything about you but create that boundary and have that you know i you know i matter too you know Instead of chasing after, giving your all, and you give your all, and then that's they take your all. They will only take what you give, right? So saving some of that for you and making sure your relationship is based on reciprocity is important too. If you're focusing on your partner, they're focusing on you, that's a great dynamic. You're pouring into each other as you pour into yourselves as well. So usually in a dynamic of where you're focusing and giving your all to someone, that usually just ends terribly because the dynamic is all messed up because they're usually focused on themselves as well <laughs> yeah. because you don't speak up about your needs your wants like it's just really bad all around mm, I love mm -hmm. that. that is so true oh my god there was something else i wanted to ask you and i i just straight up forgot because you dropped <laughs> so many gems i'm just like ah, i should have stopped her mid sentence. <laughs> it's all good i guess we'll say okay. that for another time okay uh, <laughs> This has been a phenomenal show. Thank you so much for your time, Kamisha. Let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Okay, sure. So you can find me on Facebook, Kamisha Graham. I'm sure that'll be somewhere in the info for this podcast or this uh, video. Um, Candidly, Kamisha is my Instagram and my Twitter. That information can be posted as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you heard it here, Brave Hearts. Make sure you go connect with Kamisha because she has some awesome content. We be talking stuff on uh, Twitter or yeah. whatever you want to call it, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> it's Twitter to me. I don't care, yeah, I don't care how many me, name changes we have. I'm an OG Twitter head. Yeah. I know, right? For sure. Well, I'll make sure I have everything linked up in the description below so everybody can. Uh, connect with you or, or um so when when are you gonna drop the book are you like coming out with a book or something like when listen no i've been thinking about things as i approach the new year leveling up new projects so you no know, i think that might be in the works we'll see i'm thinking of a podcast i'm thinking of books just what whatever god has for me wherever he leads me you know i'm open to it so i wouldn't be surprised if there's a book coming soon okay for sure well yeah. play yeah. this back on january 1st Get some inspiration. Remember what I said. Yeah, that I'll do. <laughs> For sure. Brave Hearts community, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. You never know if someone's dealing with, you know, them trying to get their discernment together. You just never know. You can share this with someone. And also, if you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, make sure you leave a rating and review. By doing so, it leaves you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? That's right. This is Sean Heineman with special guest. Kamisha Graham. Thanks for listening in. All right, Brave Hearts community. Take care. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.